Good morning students and welcome to the final part of my four part course on describing diagrams. Please now look at your sheet number four and at the table at the top of the page. Then answer the questions one to six below the table. So please pause the audio now while you think of your answers. Okay, question number one, the noisiest city is London. Question number two, the worst air pollution is in Mexico. Question three, the heaviest traffic congestion is also in Mexico City. Please note this question is a little bit tricky because they're not giving you the number of cars on the road, they're giving you the average speed. And we have to guess that because Mexico City has the lowest average speed per hour, this means it has the highest number of vehicles on the road. Question four, the safest city to live in is Tokyo. Question five, the city with the fewest inhabitants is LA. And last question six, the cities with the best basic services are London and Tokyo. When we talk about services, we usually mean supply of water and electricity to people's homes. Moving down to the next questions. Paragraph one, compare Shanghai and Los Angeles. Pause the audio while you think of your answer to this question. Now this question is not asking for your opinion, it's just asking to compare the statistics. So you should look at the, the numbers which have the biggest differences. And the first one I think we can see clearly is the murder rate per 100,000 people. So we might begin the biggest difference between Los Angeles and Shanghai is the murder rate per 100,000 people, which is five times higher in Los Angeles at 12.4 people per 100,000 of the population. The next big difference we can see is the clean air score. Here, the higher score means cleaner air. So we can clearly see that the air in Shanghai is more than twice as clean as the air in Los Angeles. And the, the last area where there is a significant difference is in the average speed of traffic where we can see this is around 25% higher in Los Angeles at just over 30 kilometers per hour. The other areas are really in, show insignificant differences so I think it's not necessary to mention these. Now move on to paragraph 2. Say which of the five cities provides the best environment overall and why? Now here you are being asked to express your opinion which you will not have to do in the IELTS exam. However, you will normally have to express your opinion in most other situations. So pause the audio for a moment while you compile your answer. Okay, 
Now, because you are being asked to express your opinion, you could choose any of the six criteria or factors mentioned in the table which you think are important and begin with these factors. Or you can try to talk generally about what most people would think are the most important factors. If you're a, a mum, for example, you may think that the percentage of children in secondary school is an important factor. If you are a, an environmentalist, you may think the clean air score is the most important factor. So let's begin. So for me, I don't like very crowded cities, so I'm going to suggest either Los Angeles, London or Shanghai as my favourite cities. It would certainly not be Tokyo, which has three times the, almost three times the population density of Los Angeles. I also think safety is a very important issue. So I'm going to exclude Los Angeles, which leaves me with London and Shanghai. Furthermore, I think education is very important and I can see that the percentage of children in secondary school is almost twice as high in Shanghai compared with London. So finally I choose Shanghai as the city I would like to live in. Uh, now go on to answering the final two questions at the bottom left hand corner of the page. I will let you do this by yourself as the questions are very similar to the ones we have already done. Now go on to look at the two tables at the bottom right hand side of the page. Let's look at table number one first, comparing the earnings of the world's richest football clubs in the year 2000. I want you to practice with this table comparing different numbers, perhaps using some of the numerical and comparative expressions above the tables. So for example, if we compare Manchester United and Celtic, we can see that Manchester United's earnings in 2000 were more than three times that of Celtic. What about uh, Chelsea and Barcelona? How would you compare these two different clubs in terms of earnings? Pause the audio briefly while you think of your answer. Okay, we can see that the actual number is about three, three million. Chelsea has around three million, had around three million more earnings than Barcelona. What is three as a percentage of 55? Well, we know 10% is 5.5. .5. So three is going to be between five to 10% maybe around 6 or 7 percent. You should be able to do these kind of quick calculations in your head. So we can say that Chelsea's earnings were around 6 percent higher than Barcelona in the year 2000. What about comparing Liverpool with Bayern Munich? A quick calculation shows us that this is not quite twice as much. Twice as much would be 90.6. So we can say that the earnings of Bayern Munich were almost twice as high as Liverpool in the year 2000. So practice this by yourself. Take any two football clubs 
and try to compare the numbers using either multiples or percentages or maybe even fractions. Also try to compare them from the high, the higher to the lower. So for example, if you're asked to compare Barcelona and Liverpool, we can see that Liverpool is around 10 million less than Barcelona. 10 as a percentage of 55 is around 20%. So we can say the earnings for Liverpool in the year 2000 were around 20% lower than the earnings for Barcelona. Now let's go on to the last table showing children age 7 to 15 and how they spent their money in the how they spend their money in the UK. Notice that in this table we have no time frame so we have to use the present simple tense unlike table number one where the time was the year 2000 so we use the past simple tense. So <coughs> Take a moment to study this table and tell me how you would describe the information. Pause the audio now. So let's begin with an introduction. The table shows how children aged 7 to 15 spend their money. Now look at the, the big numbers and the small numbers and the differences between males and females. So we have one, two, we have five, six categories, meaning the five categories of expenditure, then the differences between males and females. Again, I should point out that this table is far too simplistic for example, we don't know what these numbers represent. We don't know if they represent pounds or percentages. So in real life, you're not going to get a table as simple as this. However, we will describe it. If you add up the numbers for males and females, you will see they are 86 and 81 respectively. So we can see that boys spend more money than girls. Six as a percentage of 86 is around maybe 80%. So we can say that boys spend around 8% more money than girls. Then looking at the, the individual items, the first thing we can clearly see is that both boys and girls spend the most money on food and soft drinks. 37 and 36 respectively. You can put this information in brackets, 37 and 36 respectively, or you can put it after a semicolon. The next highest expenditure area is leisure goods, where boys spend almost twice as much money as girls at 29 and 17 respectively. Next paragraph, however, when it comes to clothing and footwear, we can see that girls spend twice as much money as boys at 16 and 8 respectively. We can also see that girls spend more money on household goods and services, around 60% more than boys. And finally, with regard to transportation and fares, boys spend almost twice as much as girls at seven and four respectively. Okay students, this is the end of the course on describing diagrams. I hope you have found it useful and it will certainly help you to get far higher marks in your examinations and should also be very useful in everyday life in understanding how to present information from diagrams.
Thank you for listening. Goodbye.